Hi, I'm Kim Drogi, and I'm your host for Connecting with Kim. Thank you for tuning in to our show today on Tampa Bay Arts and Education Network. We're so happy that you joined us. You can also find my show on Sun Radio 96.3 FM on uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3.30 in the afternoon. So here's how the show works. It's a conversation between two people who are interested, passionate, and engaged in what we're talking about. My show is about having people, places, and things that I think you ought to know about so you can live your best life in our little corner of paradise. And that's the goal. I'm so thrilled to, to introduce my guest today. My guest in the chair is Mr. Vern Hendricks, who is the program director for Sun Radio. Welcome, Vern, to Connecting with Kim. It's about time you had me on your program. I've been on, uh, you've been on mine for at least 100 times. Thank you for inviting me today. It's my honor to have you on my program today because you are the reason that I am sitting in this chair today. Because in uh, 2018, yes. late 2018, Vern and I met each other and we had a conversation and Vern said the magic words to me. He said, have you ever thought about being on the radio? And I said to you, well, as a matter of fact, I have. But as, as everything in life is a matter of timing and opportunity, and finally the timing was right and the opportunity is right. And so, Vern, I am so thrilled to have you join me today. I'm extremely grateful well, to you. Well, that was the day my life changed. <laughs> it really did. I have never before met someone with as much energy and passion about what she does as you. And it, it translates. It's translated over to the radio and it will translate over to TV here. And I think your audience on TBAE is in for a treat because we have been providing information to Sun City Center and the community of Sun City Center for about three years and we haven't missed a beat. And there's always been somebody, I think the hallmark of the program that we have done has been that when you and I sit there together, you as the uh, interviewer and me as the recording engineer, we invariably look at each other and say, I didn't know that. And that might not happen at this particular interview, but I think it will happen. The viewers are in for a treat when they watch Connecting with Kim. Oh, Vern, I tell you, I, I, I'm th I can't thank you enough for saying those things. I, I mean, that really, it means a lot to me. You and I started this journey together. I couldn't imagine doing it without you. We've had so much fun doing it. Um, I'm so glad you're here today because you're right. There have been many times we've looked at each other and said since the fall of 2019 when the show started, uh, where we looked at each other and said, wow, or yep. I didn't know that, or how many great people have we met, Vern? So you know what? Let's, let's do it just like we do it in the studio. That sounds good to me. I always take a few minutes at the top of the show to let my guests talk about their journey through life thus far. What brought you to the point that we are now sitting down together? Wow. So take a few minutes. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting to try and explain to people what brought me to this because as a kid growing up, I always wanted to be in radio. I never thought I had a good face for television. I still think that I don't. But I always thought that I had a great personality for radio. And one of the things that I really wanted to do was to get to a station perhaps in like Iowa and do the midnight to 5 a.m. shift <laughs> and talk to the kooks on the radio. But that never panned out because I found out early on there ain't no money in this, not when you're starting out. And um, my wife and I, Lisa, who co-hosts my Thursday morning show, she and I were married 50 years last month. So we were young kids. Awesomeness. We I were, love that. Yeah, we were young kids when we started this. Our marriage, I should say, not this. And I ended up working, I spent 10 years working in the college book business. For those of you who may have been in the college uh, environment and went to sell your books back, I was that dirty you-know-what that would only give you 10 cents on the dollar for your books. <laughs> that was one of the things. I have spent 10 years in the college book business and then 10 years working for Amtrak. And in there I learned computers and I spent about 23 years in the computer business and I kept moving from company to company to company because I, get, I kept getting acquired. The line I used was, they got me in a shrewd business move. <laughs> and, yeah, so I, and I ended up with a, a company called Cardinal Health mm -hmm. and I was doing desktop support. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Now, you know how that works for me because I have told you many times, I cannot do that stuff by trying to guide you through a picture in my head. I have to touch the thing. And that's what I did for a lot of years and ended up with them. And then at the tender young age of 63 and one half, I said, I've had enough. That was nine years ago. Yeah. April of 13. April of 14, I see this article in the paper that said, we're starting a radio station in Sun City Center. If you have any interest at all in volunteering for this, come to this meeting, which turned out to be a Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. I went to the first meeting. I've been with the station ever since. At the tail end of April, Lisa and I just did our 400th consecutive morning show on Thursday mornings on Sun Radio. I'm very proud of everything that we've done. That's amazing. I, I'm so happy for you, Vern, because I, like you uh, referenced before, I've been a guest on your show uh, many mornings. It's always fun. Uh, you always give me a chance to plug Connecting with Kim, which I always appreciate. And um, I, you and I both know that that radio station, you are the linchpin. You are the foundation. You are the rock that holds that station together. And I want to branch out now into a discussion of uh, the value of community radio because you started at a community radi radio station I started at the same community radio station and now I've had this wonderful opportunity to have my show on Tampa Bay Arts and Education Network and still remain on Sun Radio so let's talk about community radio well back in 2000 the uh, FCC passed regulations that permitted low power FM that's what uh, community radio is for the most part it's low power FM stations that are a hundred watts in some cases less and it has to do with in the communities how is the station that is licensed for low power FM um, interfering perhaps with another station that may be in close proximity and the the stations have to be aware of that now that's something that our general manager Peter Schwartz takes care of my responsibility is just get that program out on the air but low power FM in the case of Sun Radio, we bring community information to the community. That's what it's about. There are other stations, like for instance, in our neighborhood, mm -hmm. we're next door to Ruskin. Right. There's WPHX, mm -hmm. which is the Firehouse Cultural Center's The Phoenix. And they do a lot of cultural stuff. There is a second radio station in Sun City Center, Grace FM. That is our sister station mm -hmm. that provides a religious content. Mm -hmm. Next door in the town of Wamama, there's WKOT. And WKOT also provides religious content. You come further north and there's two, ta two stations in Brandon. One of them is Power 90.1. Mm -hmm. And we'll be ref uh, referencing that when we get into specific programming that, we'll, that we will do. So as you can see, there are a lot of uh, community FM stations and their focus is and has to be the community. Now, when we got started. Well, let's back up. Okay. So I want to give at this point a shout out to uh, the owner of Sun Radio as well as Grace Radio, uh, uh, Mr. Peter Schwartz, because he had he had a career in local community radio station, primarily religious radio, and he moved to Sun City Center and he had this uh, vision of having a local community radio station, and therefore Sun Radio. Uh, was born and came to be and came on air and provides what you and I both know is a valuable service to our community because we not only, uh, Sun Radio not only plays music, but uh, we'll talk about the programming in a second, but we also have community information. So let's, let's pick up the discussion from what you were, you just were on that point. You have to provide community service. Yes, we do. We really do. When we started this off, we heard a lot of information from people saying, well, we want to listen to music. We would rather have a lot of music. And I think you and I had this conversation once upon a time. You want music? Wonderful. Go get a, a subscription to one of the music services. I'm not going to give any names here. They don't need a plug. They don't need a Everybody plug. Everybody knows who they Everybody are. Everybody knows, yeah. Go listen to one of those streaming services. You get all the music you want. Heck, you can, you can listen to the Beatles 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can drill down to one artist. I mean, you don't even that's have to right. listen to any other. You just drill down to one artist, and that's all you listen to. That's right. So then we decided, okay, 
let's have a variety of programming. Not only things that people would be entertained by, but things that people would be educated by. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to find outside of an LPFM mm -hmm. another station that is going to tell you what's going on, that we're playing bingo this Thursday night or something like that, because that's not going to draw for the, the general population outside of a great area or outside a great area in Florida in like the, uh, the scope of what Connecting with Kim now is going to get to. And that is, is you're going to have a broad reach of a million people. Well, but let's, but let's just acknowledge the fact, though, that, you know, for instance, for a while I was a snowbird, and so I would go up north. And um, the beauty of streaming is that, and other uh, radio platforms, mm -hmm. is that I could take Sun Radio with me when I was up north, and I could listen to it anytime I wanted and keep up to date on everything that was happening in my community. And I love that. Yeah. And that's the idea behind the whole thing. Now, what's interesting, too, is, is that if you're on FM, mm -hmm. we're only good for about 10 miles. Mm. So as you drive down Interstate 75 south from Sun City Center and you pass under 275, mm -hmm. our signal fades. Mm -hmm. But there is a signal from a station called WUSB in Longboat Key. They play the same identical music we do, and people will commend us all the time. Oh, we get your signal all the way down there. And I just smile and I say, thank you. Thank you very much. So there's, you know, there's a lot that goes on in the community radio, and I think it's, you can testify to it by, by the programming that we do. Well, let's talk about the programming that Sun Radio offers. I, I think we should cover that. I think we should, too. Yeah. When we started this, Peter, who mm -hmm. had the idea, he wanted to do live morning programming. Mm -hmm. the, uh, we started out as radio the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. Now we're your community radio station. And, and that was the way we branded it early on was radio the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you did when you was a kid is you listened to the radio and there was always a disc jockey playing the top music of the time and giving information about what going, what's going on in the community and that sort of thing. So we have live hosts on Monday through Friday from 9 to 11 mm -hmm. and on Wednesday and Friday afternoons from 4 to 6. Now it's not always the same. We've got a guy on Monday who opens his college of musical knowledge. It's called Night in the Morning. His name's Hal Knight. He's been a radio personality for years, but he's retired to Sun City Center and he enjoys doing this. He's very good at it. He's incredible. If you're just joining me now on Connecting with Kim here on Tampa Bay Arts and Education Network, uh, my guest in the chair is Mr. Vern Hendricks, who is the program director as well as a morning show DJ on Sun Radio 96.3 FM in Sun City Center as well as on stream. Now, we were talking about Hal Knight. Yes, Hal. Hal has been around for a long time. He also has a program on Friday afternoon between 4 and 6 called Do Wop and More. So mm -hmm. those people that want to listen to Do Wop music, there you are. And, and not only does he have two great shows, Monday morning and Friday afternoon, but he is an absolute wealth of information about uh, all of the music that he plays and all of the artists that he features. Yes, he is. And he is also over on our uh, sister station, Grace Radio. Grace Radio, where he does a lot of the religious broadcasts. Yes. So he, he's loving this. Yes. He's phenomenally he talented. He is. He's phenomenally talented. On Tuesday mornings, we have a gentleman, Joe Kurska, and Joe is a, a disc jockey in San Diego, California, and Honolulu, Hawaii. Now, why he would leave Honolulu and retire in Sun City Center, Florida, I do not know. Anybody's guess. But his, his, is, the eight, his is 80s radio, so if 80s is your thing, Tuesday mornings is Joe. On Wednesday, A.J. Holiday, with his Americana mix. He plays Americana music, some country because we're not a country station, but there are people who listen to country music. Absolutely. I'm going to skip over Thursday because that's my morning and go to Friday, which is Friday morning. It's the morning show with Peter and whoever shows up. And that's because I think this would now be a perfect opportunity to tell them that the general manager of our station, Peter Schwartz, who is on the air on Friday morning, is also blind, mm -hmm. as is Hal Knight. Mm -hmm. And that the job that they do is absolutely wonderful. And it's whoever shows up because Peter can't see to run things has to be here to help them. Right. But that's not all that we do. No. On Saturday morning, 
we have a wonderful program at 8 o'clock, and that is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. And the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, you will get your questions, legal questions, answered for free on the air. For free on for, the air? For free. We love Attorney Patrick Smith. We do. We, we do. We very much love Attorney Patrick we Smith. We do. He's a great guy. And then we also have a financial program from Payout Wealth Management in our town, and we have real estate tips from a couple of local realtors. Uh, uh, Selena Taddix and Kevin McPherson. From if Turning I may. Leaf Realty. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so it, it's a broad spectrum of things that we do. Now, I want to zero in on two programs. Okay. The first program is called Connecting with Kim. <laughs> That's what started this, that's what brought us to where we are today. You have over a hundred shows in your library, and those hundred shows are available to people on Facebook. And the idea is to bring the information, like you said, you want to bring information to people to help live their best lives, and I'm very proud of that. And then the other one is a, a gentleman by the name of Bill Hodges, mm -hmm. who in our town is the veterans veteran. He's one of the veterans veterans. And Bill does a program called Help Me Out. I veterans Corner. Thank you. Veterans Corner Radio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. This is the other um, thing that happens about to the you know, seniors in our community. We tend to get a little forgetful every now and again. Oh, I could start off with a thought and then not remember why I went there. Well, yeah, so, like, I, I no, do too. Yeah. Time. So Veterans Corner Radio, Veterans Corner Radio, we started. Oh, gee, had to be four years ago. Yeah, I think, I think four years ago. And because it started before my show, I remember that. And after we listened to him carry on and on and on and on about people not being able to get his program on any other platform, right? He decided to start a podcast. Well, the I, I have to say we should give you know a plug for this because you know the pandemic. We we both agreed the pandemic offered uh, it offered some challenges, but it awful also offered a lot of opportunities. And one of the opportunities that it offered was Bill, who was isolating at home but still wanted to do his show. He embraced the green screen and broadcasting and 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 started the podcasting. Well, in all fairness to Bill, he has had. A, uh, a TV show called um, Government Something with Government. Yeah, I which we remember. won't. It's a different. Yeah, it's a different, different network. network. But but so he's used to that. Mm -hmm. But the idea is is that with Zoom, he's able to get people from Washington D.C. now, and mm -hmm. here's why. He has over a hundred podcasts on his uh, Veterans Corner Radio dot com through a podcast. All of the major podcast providers. He's gone to fifty states. Mm -hmm. He's gone to 28 countries, and over 26,000 people have listened to one of his podcasts, and that's reach we could never get. And that's kind of what I'm very proud of is that I was there to help start those things, and kind of like you, when I said, Kim, what do you think about doing a radio program? <laughs> and, and Kim literally went, twist my arm. Yeah. I'm here for you. Yeah, and and that was <laughs> what started all that. And there's a, and the reason that I I wanted to mention Bills is because that program is also aired on four stations that I had referred to earlier. Exactly. The uh, WKOT, which is in Wamama, mm -hmm. WPHX, which is the Phoenix, uh, Power ninety ninety point one out of Brandon, and then of course Sun Radio. And listen, you other stations that we mentioned out there, you should be airing connecting with Kim also. <laughs> so I'm just going to throw out that shameless plug on my behalf. Yes. So um, let's talk. So we've talked about some of the programming, but I I think you know having been so closely associated with the with the radio station, I think we ought to um, talk about some of the other uh, public services that we provide to our community. Interesting story back there, and that was just after we were getting started. Hur the, the hurricane was coming through. Which one was that, Irma? Yeah, I believe so. I think it was. Yeah, we were. It was 2014, right? We were mm -hmm. talking about 2014. No, no, no. This was. Uh, you mean the first one that was supposed to come up I-75 and take us all out? Remember? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I so anyway. Okay. So anyway, um, 
that hurricane was supposed to take us out. Mm -hmm. One of our people got on her program and said, well, we're going to have hourly updates for you about the hurricane. I was like deer in the headlights. <laughs> and we I are? had to come up with a way that I could record at home and put those updates up and have them air on the, you know, and have them get out on the air. Mm. Because Sun Radio is a low budget, almost no budget station. <laughs> we, I found a way to do that and provided the, the, the way to do that. Well, we are a nonprofit. Yes. Uh, we are an NPO. We are 501c3. And so anybody who is interested in making uh, a contribution that will really be appreciated uh, to local radio stations, because most of them are NPOs, uh, they, it would surely be appreciated. It sure would, because we need some new chairs. But you know what? We also, um, I think we should talk about Crystal's program, too, because that's an important service that we provide to the community. Thank you. Thank you. I almost forgot that. Well, we don't want to forget that because no, Crystal's don't. my friend. She never that's did sure. And, and that's the newest program that we have, and that's called Follow the Sun. And the I girl, love the name of that show. The girls brought it to me. We did two programs, which kind of died off during the pandemic. Right. One program was Someone You Should Know. Mm -hmm. And it introduced you to people in play or people in our community who we think you might like to meet. Well, people in Sun City Center who had something something interesting to talk about from their background, some interesting experience or some interesting thing that they did. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, once upon a time we had the uh, creator of the Avon bottles. Exactly. So then the next thing we had was a program called Club Interviews. Really, I mean that's what it was. We didn't have a fancy name. Once a year, Sun City Center pre-pandemic had a uh, party, as it will, mm -hmm. in our large community hall where we had people from the various clubs come in and talk to the community about their clubs. And I would set up two broadcast or two remote recording facilities and addressing rooms in our large community center there, and we would record up to a year's worth of club interviews. That all fell apart, but that's where you and I got to meet. That's where we got to meet. Uh, I was on the board of the Wisconsin Club, and, and you should understand, at Sun City Center, we have like over uh, in excess of 250 clubs. I mean, it, it, there's nothing that you can think about doing that you can't find a club to do it with. But in any case, I came over to do that interview, and, and that's when you said the magic words to me. Have you ever thought about being on the radio? So, and, yeah. Yeah. And, so, anyway. So, that's where we got that. So, well, those things went out during the pandemic. Those things fell apart, and we started a program called Follow the Sun. And now that's... Uh, I Hosted think by Crystal Frank our friend Chris, Crystal Frank. Thank you. I think we're three months into that now. Mm -hmm. and uh, She's doing a great job. She's doing a wonderful job. And so we're still able to introduce people in our community that we think others might like to meet. Mm -hmm. And we're also able to talk about the clubs. And we have got, like you said, hundreds of clubs, dance clubs, uh, archery, lawn bowling, pickleball, all of that stuff. And well, let's not shortchange Thursday morning, uh, the morning show with Lisa and Vern, because that's your show. That and is. you, in addition to uh, playing music, uh, you also have guests on your show. And that's where this has kind of worked for both of us, because at least uh, uh, four times a year, I will have Commissioner White. Commissioner White comes down to um, our remote studio, which is at my house. Now, County Commissioner for District 4, Stacey White. Yes, and, and uh, the commissioner comes down, and he's kind enough to tell us what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I always have our community resource deputy, Jeff Mary from the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Department, mm -hmm. to tell us what's going on. Every time he gets a new corporal, we get that person in. I also have the president of the Community Association, and you know, it, it's, it's absolutely been wonderful. And like I said, the tail end of April, 400 continuous morning shows and I'm very very proud of that. You should Will be proud I of that. Will I make 500? Yeah. We'll have to see. Yeah. If my voice doesn't get better between now and then. Oh it will. Knows? You <laughs> you just suffered from that crud that's been going around that a lot of people yes, have had. That's what it's I like hard to, to get over. That's what I like to call the creepy yeah, crud. It's yeah. It's the creepy crud. Yeah. Uh, no, you do a great job on Thursday mornings, Vern. I think that uh, you and Lisa together uh, provide a, a, a valuable service to the community because you not only feature, usually feature some artist on your show, but then you also impart a lot of valuable community information, which we try to get all of the morning shows to do, but to be honest with you, some, some do a better job at it than others. I think the thing that we have to remember is, is that we're all volunteers on we're this. We're all volunteers, people. Nobody's getting paid to, you know, for this limelight. 
No, no, we're, we're not. We do it out of the... We do it out of love and dedication to our community. Uh, and uh, and, and a, a lot of people don't realize how many long hours you put into this. Well, I'll tell you what, Vern, um, I I'm, love having you on my show. We're down to the last couple of minutes. So is there anything else you want to share with the audience about Sun Radio uh, or anything you think they ought to know about? Yeah, actually there is. I'm going to be over here talking to our friends. If there's a community radio station in your area, please support it. I mean, seriously. Help it with money if you can, but at least listen to it and tell your friends to listen to it. It's a very valuable commodity. We love what we do. And now, the other part, and this is to you. I am so incredibly proud of you that you have been able to do this, that you have been able to bring this to the point to Tampa Bay Arts and Education. This is a wonderful group of people down here. I think you're going to do great. I really do. And I encourage everybody that is listening to us today, put this on your calendar. Watch this program. Because quite honestly, you're going to learn things that you didn't know you didn't know. And that's what Connecting with Kim is all about. Thank you, Kim. I really appreciate it. It's been a wonderful experience. Will I see you Thursday morning on my program? Absolutely. I thought as much. <laughs> Thank you again, Kim. Thank you, Vern. My guest today on Connecting with Kim has been uh, Mr. Vern Hendricks, who is the program director for Sun Radio. And uh, that's all we have time for today, but I want you to know that you can catch my show here on Tampa Bay at Arts and Education Network. You can watch it on watch.tba.net anytime you want, and you can listen to the audio on Sun Radio 96.3 FM and on stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3.30. We'll be back next week with another edition of Connecting with Kim.